Hey artists, um, today we are going to make a really beautiful painting um, that I call Winter Solstice and um, as a bonus we're going to make a spring version as well that I call uh, Spring Equinox. So um, to get started what I'm going to do is grab a pencil and I'm just going to sketch out my layout a little bit here and understand that where you place everything is a matter of taste so you can totally change this up a bit I encourage you to experiment a little bit with how things are set out uh, but what I'm gonna do is just make a circular shape here for the moon I'm not worried too much about things being perfect I'm just sketching uh, so that I know where to apply my paint um, I know that I want snowy area to kind of come down and across. So I'm just making kind of the horizon line there. And then I know I want my tree right about here. Now all this is going to get covered up, uh, but this gives me a visual to work with as I begin. So um, let me get my colors out here. This is my color palette. Um, Again, this is totally flexible. The majority of my painting is going to be the blue and purple background. Um, so I've just got a violet and I've got an ultramarine blue. And then for the moon, I'm going to use a little bit of yellow and mostly white. And then for my accent colors in the background sky, I've got a bright yellow, an orange, a fuchsia pink, and kind of a cyan blue. Again, the uh, colors you use for the background, totally up to you. I encourage you to change them um, and use whatever colors you really enjoy. I kind of went for a, a wintry palette, what I felt was kind of cold and wintry. All right, so we are gonna start with um, just a, a medium sized brush here and we're going to start with the background. Um, the first part of that is the moon so what I'm going to do is get kind of a big glob of white and I'm going to spread this baby just over my moon shape. I'm going to tap a little bit of yellow on my brush and I'm going to mix that in until I'm happy. I do want some variation, so if you find it's too yellow, you can add more white. If you want to see the brush strokes, um, you can add more color in. It's really up to you. And I'm not real worried about the shape of the moon because I know that I'm going to paint around it with my purples anyway. Perfect. So I'm happy with my moon. I know this is kind of a light color, so it's hard to see on the camera. Um, yay! Focus. Okay. So that's what I've got. Just a little bit of white and yellow there. Now I'm going to do a majority of my background with the violet and the ultramarine blue. Um, this painting is very loose. It's very painterly. What that means is you can see the brush strokes and that's what I want. So what I'm going to do is take some of this color. I want a lot on my paintbrush. I want this paint to be thick on my painting. So what I'm going to do is just start going around that sun. So I've got my purple. I'm just going to kind of alternate here. A little bit of blue. To this background. I do not want to see real thin strokes. I do not want the canvas to show through too much. I just want to be kind of nice and thick with these, 
with the application. And as I apply it, I'm going to continue that circular shape out from my moon. I definitely want to make sure I've kind of got a balance between the blue and the purple. I'm going to go over my uh, line that I made for the snow at the bottom and I'm going to make sure that I go all the way to my sides as well. Now that we've got some coverage on the background here, what I'm going to do is just wipe off my brush, set that aside. I'm going to get a smaller brush and I'm going to start applying some of this other color. Now what I don't want to do is to paint it in and blend it and move it. I'm just applying the bright colors kind of in a big blob just on the canvas. I'm not blending them, I'm just putting them on there. So I'm gonna start with this bright blue. Again, don't forget that your accent colors can really be anything. If you pick up some of that background color, just wipe it off and come back and start again. So I'm going to move into this bright pink. And I'm just, I'm not worried about how evenly spaced they are. I just want to have a bunch of these beautiful colors all over. moving to another color.
Okay, so now I've got my blues and purples as my base, and I've dolloped in some of these um, bright colors into the background. You could even add in some white if you'd like. I do that when I touch up the moon a little bit. Um, but what we're going to do for the next step is you're going to need a paper towel and a nice clean brush. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and use this nice thick one inch brush here. This might be a three quarter inch brush. Anyway, um, what has happened is some of my background has dried and some has not and that's kind of what I want and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start blending this stuff into the background but I'm going to be thoughtful about how I handle it so um, you just kind of have to dive in and what I want you to do is pick you know a part of your painting right near the moon right around one of those colors and just sweep lift Wipe your brush clean and then continue around. Sweep and wipe. Sweep and wipe. And just kind of move around in a circular motion. And what it's going to do is blend some of this, but you want to make sure you wipe off your brush so that every time you're putting it onto your palette, you've got a nice, dry, clean brush. I don't need to rinse it off, I don't need to do that. But what this does is it keeps the colors from over blending. It keeps you from picking up too much on your brush. And it, it blends in this color into your background. So you just every swipe, you're gonna pick up some paint and then wipe it off. sure I'm continuing with that circular motion and that's really the only trick to it is some of these colors are going to get muddy. Okay. So now I've got these nice, big, bright brush strokes in there. Um, what you can do at this point, what I like to do, is just use this to refocus my painting here. Now I've got my colors applied. Do I like all these colors? Can I still see some of the canvas underneath? Um, so this is the point where we touch up the background and touch up the moon a little bit. So what I'm going to do is every so often I can see a little bit of kind of white of the canvas. So I'm just going to come back through with either my blues or my purples and I'm going to fill some of that in. Um, sometimes because colors don't mix well, for example the orange, um, it's not going to mix well with the purple, it's not going to mix well with the blue. Um, if it's over blended and it turned a little muddy, uh, what I can recommend is just adding a little bit of blue or purple over the top of it and that'll go away. So once that dries a little, you can do that. But I'm just touching up some of these light parts of the canvas uh, with a little more color so that I cannot see the white of the canvas. This step is optional, so if you like the way everything is blended out, you do not have to do this.
don't know. There's also some colors you want to emphasize. You can add a little more in. Um, what I like to do around my moon as well is just add in a little white where my colors start. bring some of that brightness of the moon out into the painting. beautiful background here. Now, um, in order to move on to the next step, we want this to be dry. So now's a good time to pause the video and uh, maybe take a bathroom break, get a drink, stretch. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and pause this and let this dry and then move on to the next step. Right, guys now this is not completely dry but it's about three quarters of the way dry um, and that is good enough to work with so um, for the next step you want a fairly clean paintbrush because we're going to work with white uh, we're gonna add in some snow at the bottom so uh, what I'm gonna do is just kind of clean off my paintbrush as best as I can it doesn't have to be perfect but um, I'm gonna grab a nice big dollop of white and what I'm going to do is redraw in my snowy line here at the bottom. Now as you see, I'm picking up some of that blue as I start to blend this in, that blue and purple, and that's okay. Because I don't want solid white at the bottom. I want there to be some shading and movement. I might even add a little bit in. And what this does is it keeps us from having a stark white background because snow, when you look at snow, it's not completely white, right? Like it's got shadows and layers and all kinds of stuff. So by adding this color, we bring in some of the color from the sky into our landscape, which is exactly what we want. So I've got a little bit of blue, a little bit of purple down here, and I'm just moving that white around until I get it how I like it. And I do not like to leave any of the sides of the canvas untouched, so I'm going to add a little white on the bottom sides here, around the bottom. That is our layer of snow and the next step is to add in the black tree and so once again what I'm gonna do is just dry this really quickly um, when I want something to dry fast I've got a hair dryer here I just turn it on low and um, give it a quick zap Alright, 
again it's not completely dry but it's dry enough to work forward and for the next step I'm gonna pull out some black here and I'm gonna draw in my tree liner brush. It's just a nice thin liner. And then what I'm going to do is just redraw in that center line that I painted over um, where I want the center of my tree trunk to be. And actually I can already tell this black paint is very thin. And because I'm going to be doing a lot of lines, I'm just going to thin it out a smidge um, so that it's easier to work with. So if you need to thin out your paint, you can do so. I don't want it watery. But I need to get some movement with it. So, let's see. I'm gonna get some nice, nice viscosity on that paint. And I'm just gonna draw my center line. Now, I don't know if you can tell, this tree trunk right now is not straight. It's not supposed to be straight. Um, things in nature are not perfect. So I'm not going to stress about the shape because when trees grow, they're bumpy, they're knobby, they move around, and that's what makes them look like trees. So here's my center point, and what I'm going to do is little by little kind of build up this lower trunk and add some branches. Once you kind of have a shape of your tree that you enjoy, you can add some of these smaller little twiggy things that kind of protrude off. Once you have your shape and your twigs the way that you like them, you'll want to use a medium sized to thick sized brush and just fill in the base of your tree starting at the bottom.
white is mixing in there at the bottom, that's okay, I can fix that. When I'm finished, I just want to get the shape kind of pinned in first, making sure that my branches are thickest by the trunk. My tree is in no way perfect, but what makes it look like a tree is the imperfection in the shape. <clears throat> so I don't have, you know, just a straight trunk. Um, the proportions of the tree, um, the rules to follow are um, you want your branches to be finished the edges and get thicker as they move, move towards that branch or towards that trunk. So um, the little branches on the outside should be the thinnest and then as the branches get towards that center line they get thicker. Now I've got white mixed in my tree here. I'm not crazy about it because that white at the bottom wasn't dry. Um, so I'm just kind of thinning it out and when that tree trunk is dry I'm just gonna go over it again with black okay um, but while the black is nice and wet I've lifted a lot of this paint off trying to mix it in um, but what I'm gonna do is go back to my snow brush um, I'm gonna pick up some white and I'm gonna add in some shadow from the tree now this is going to be dependent on where you have your moon in relation to your tree, but what you want to do is just have kind of an imaginary line. So the moon would be shining this way, and so my line would kind of go like this. So I know that my shadow coming from the moon is going to be right here. That's where I want to put my shadow. If this were reversed, actually let me show you my sample that I made. So in this one, the moon is right here. If I have my imaginary line that I draw, I want my shadow to be right here, where the tree is blocking that moonshine, okay? So um, if my moon was here and my tree was here, my shadow would be right here. Anyway, okay, so here's my imaginary line, and what I'm gonna do is add some snow over this tree trunk and then I'm just gonna kind of blend it out, right? Okay, so that makes a shadow. I've got a little bit of that black, and I don't wanna over blend, um, but this is where I can kind of just add some shape in there. Blend it, blend it out just slightly into the other snow. to be able to see your black it's going to feel very strong um, it's going to seem like you're using a ton or mixing in a ton of black um, but it's actually more subtle than you think because um, when you look at snow outside there is a lot of shading a lot a lot of shading so uh, to my eye right now this feels extremely 
dark on camera it's not picking up a lot of dark it looks pretty subtle so don't feel like yours is out of control I promise you if you step away from it and come back to it tomorrow that's not gonna seem crazy um, also another tip step back three or four feet from your painting and look at it there um, get some perspective on how it looks from a little bit of a distance and that'll show you how balanced your colors are Okay, so we've got the shadow wind on our tree. One of the other things that we're going to do now is finish adding in some snow. And so we're going to keep using white. And I'm just going to get a small paintbrush. The size doesn't really matter. We're just going to kind of blob in some snow. I'm not worried about the black being dry because we're just tapping it in. So I'm just, I've got a fine paintbrush here, um, picking up some white. And where I'm going to start adding snow is anywhere that I see kind of a V shape in my tree, I know the snow is going to kind of accumulate in there. So I'm just tap, tap, tap. I'm not using brush strokes. I'm just kind of tapping it in. And you can kind of see I'm holding the brush at the end. That gives me less control over where the snow goes and makes it a little more natural because it's just kind of imperfect. So I'm just tapping it in wherever I see a V where you know the snow might pile up. Maybe a little bit here. You can put in as much or as little snow as you want. Sometimes I like to say it could be a Colorado snow or it could be a Kentucky snow. All right. Once you have some in on the V shapes, we're going to move out to the branches. Now, um, any of the branches that are horizontal would accumulate snow, right? So horizontal means just kind of that left to right. This is vertical, this is horizontal. So add some snow, um, maybe on some of those little V's at the edge and any horizontal branches that you want. Using the same motion, just kind of tap, tap, tap it on there. We're not going for perfection. When snow falls, the wind blows the trees, things move just kind of almost putting some highlights on this tree. So just keep adding snow in your tree until you're happy with the way that it looks. Now what I'm going to do is because I wasn't very happy with my black here is I'm just going to touch up that uh, tree trunk. You might not have that problem. But I just want to cover it. I don't like that white in there because this would be a darker part of the tree trunk because it's shadowed, so there definitely would not be any white. So I'm just going to touch that up. That was just an error that I made that I wanted to fix. Alright, still working with the snow. Now what I want to do is add in some snow falling in the sky. So what I'm going to do is grab a paintbrush and I'm going to use the wrong end of the paintbrush. Okay, I'm going to dip it in some white paint and then I'm just going to randomly make some dots. Uh, 
the key to this is move quickly because if you move slowly you're going to overthink it you're going to think oh i need one here oh i need one here and snow falls random sometimes you have flakes close together sometimes you have them far apart um, so just move around you want some in front of your tree some behind your tree you don't want this to, to look uniform make sure there's some by your edges some down at the bottom Once you get the snow in there guys we're finished this is all I have for you for this side of the painting so um, if you are happy with the way that it looks you can sign your work and then uh, what I encourage you to do is let this dry and then join me for the second half of this lesson uh, which is the spring equinox painting which is very very similar to this but we're going to use some spring colors and shake it up so that you can have a two-sided painting um, that when the winter is over you can easily flip over and display for spring. Okay guys, so um, I said we were going to try another version of this called Spring Equinox and what I'm going to do this is completely dry. This was actually my sample, so this one's a little different than the one that I showed you. Um, but what we're going to do is flip over our painting, and I am going to work on the back of this, okay? So um, this right here is unfinished uh, canvas, so it's fabric. It does not have gesso on it, um, and so it's a little more absorbent so we could do two things at this point if you have gesso you can put some gesso on there if you've got white paint you can use white paint as well so I'm just gonna throw on some white paint here um, you can use gesso if you're more comfortable and I'm just gonna kind of smooth it around with a palette knife um, and what this is gonna do is coat some of that fabric so that it's not quite as absorbent um, but it's easier to work with. And I'm using a palette knife because it just makes a really nice thin coat. Um, you could also scrape with a credit card, the side of a ruler, really anything where you could just get a nice um, smoothness to it. I don't, you could use a brush, but it's going to be a little more difficult just to spread it around and get that nice thin coat that you're looking for. I'm not going to be a perfectionist about it because I know I'm going to paint over this anyway, and I'm going to have a lot of brush stroke showing. So. I'm not too worried about it. slightly with just the absorbency of that unfinished canvas there. Um, should it take very long to dry since it's a nice thin coat, I'm just going to dry it real quick with my hair dryer. we 
stuff. That just makes it a little easier to work with. Okay. So again, you can choose your own palette um, for the sky this time. Um, I've got a lighter shade of purple, kind of a, a light violet, a lavender color that I'm going to use. That's going to be my primary color. Um, I have some of the bright fuchsia that I had previously, and I think I'm just going to add a little bit of white to that to lighten that up a little bit. So, I'm going to mix this up. There, just to tone it down. Um, and then the rest of the colors I'm going to add in. Okay. So what I'm going to do is um, we're making a spring palette again, um, just like I did the first time. I'm going to add in kind of where I want my moon. I'm going to add in where I want my horizon line to be and where I want my tree. That's just a visual to help me out. That can change as we go. Okay. So for my moon, again, I want some white and some yellow, and I'm just going to mix in my moon here, Get these nice bright colors around it, just like we did the last time. So. Just like before, we're going to add, add in our background colors. And so I'm just going to use a plain brush. Um, and I'm mostly going to use this purple and pink, but um, again, I'm going to go nice and thick. Purple. Just kind of working in that circular motion. And then adding in some pink. How I'm going to differ this one um, is I'm also going to add in some white to this background. I don't want this to be nearly as dark. And so as I work with these colors, I'm just going to add in some white. Now you're probably wondering, what are you going to do with this edge? Y'all, I'm just going to keep working out. So when I get to this point, I'm just going to make sure my wood is covered with color. And I'm going to do the same thing here on the edges, just like if I was painting on the flat portion, okay? So, a little white, a little pink. Now this one I am going to blend in a little bit more make it a little more blendy before I add some of those um, accent colors in. So right now what I'm doing is just applying color in these shades of pink and purple. Now in that circular motion. So while we're working on this back side is that you come back and put, add some color to the edge of your canvas. Just so that if it's seen on the inside, um, you don't see that wood. So I'm just making streaks in the same lines 
as I would if the painting just continued. So you're not going to see a lot of this, but you just are kind of blending it in so it's not super obvious, right? a bit messier than my first background because um, the color palette's a little different. So um, I'm just going to come back in again and make some swoops before I add my accent colors so that this blends in the direction I want it to go and so that all of my canvas is covered. So. Rounded. And I'm not wiping my brush off because all these colors blend very well together. If you need to, add in some more paint. Just be wary not to over blend. Use large strokes whenever possible. Do not over blend this painting. You do find that you've over blended, just pick up a little bit of color and streak it in. back with a smaller brush just as I did in the first painting and I'm going to add little touches of color all the way around again. Um, now I don't need to add purple and I don't need to add that fuchsia because um, we're using that as our main colors but I'm going to add in some of this orange um, and I am going to take a little bit of thoughtfulness to try to cover any areas where maybe my canvas shows through. But again, I'm just going to add kind of some big dollops, making sure you add some on the edges of your painting as well, not just the inside. my brush. I'm going to put a little yellow. motion. These are 
very free painting, sometimes that can be difficult to do, just not think about it, just plop the paint in. And I am going to use a color that I did not use earlier, and that is just kind of a minty green. And I'm going to add some of this in there, because this is a spring painting, and in the spring I think of green, so. Or maybe I should say I look forward to green it's been so dark and gloomy and dead all year. Okay, so adding a little bit of this minty green here and there. Now you can certainly add whatever colors you feel like are your springtime colors. Um, I was just kind of going for colors that uh, felt springy to me, so the color palette is always, always, always flexible. around guys okay now the next step is to get a dry brush and just blend some of this out so you're going to want a paper towel and a nice big brush and again I'm just going to start here at the moon blend white blend white around this moon. Not forgetting the outside. like with the first go round, um, I'm going to add a little white here from the moon. I might just blend some of this. I feel like I lost a little bit of my mint, so I'm just going to add a little bit of that white back in. That is my spring background here and um, instead of using white for snow on the ground I am going to use some green uh, because the grass uh, would inevitably 
slowly start growing. Um, so, um, I don't want to be too bright with my green. I want it to feel um, kind of new, I guess. So, I'm going to use a little bit of brown as my ground um, instead of the white, right? Like we used white for the snow. This time I'm using brown. So this is called raw sienna. It's really just kind of a, a really dark tan. Let's see, this is my brush that I used the white for. So I'm just going to, um, first I'm just gonna kind of apply a coat of this um, right where I want my horizon line to be just so I know where to paint. Right. So that's my horizon line. And I'm going to need a lot of raw sienna just like I needed a lot of white. And I'm going to fill in the space here. And as I'm working As I'm working through this, I'm going to pick up a little bit of that maybe mint and brush it in there and just a little bit of a kind of a, a yellow green. But what I'm going to do first is kind of get this all covered before I add in any of that texture. Making sure that I'm getting the inside of my wood of the canvas as well. First step is just to get this brown spread out. So you can tell working with these different colors is just slightly different. So with the white, I had a little more ease when doing the bottom here. With this brown, I want to put the coat of brown on there first, just because this color is so much darker, it will eat those green shades. Whereas the white would blend, you know, it blended with the blue very easily. Now, I'm not painting the sides of my canvas because I painted them for the winter. I'm just um, going right up to the edge. So here I've got my coat of the raw sienna here, this dark, dark tan. Um, so I've got my mint green and I've got a yellow green. And I'm just going to put a little bit of these on my palette and brush a little bit into my earth that I've got there. just like I did with the snow. So I have a little brown on my brush, and this time I'm gonna pick in a little bit of that green. So, um, I'm just gonna add that in to kind of make my hills look rolling. Not forgetting the, the edges here. sure I've got plenty of brown down there, plenty of green, and that it shows. You know, I don't I don't want to overmix this. Don't forget that this front part of your palette is, or I'm sorry, this front part of your pan canvas is part of your painting. So make sure you get some some 
touches of green in there. And then maybe blend them out to go with the inside. So. movement and you like how it looks you can go ahead and stop and this is where uh, we want our painting to be mostly dry so um, I'm gonna go ahead and blow dry this uh, this is a great part of the process to stop get a drink let your painting dry and then meet me back here I've got this dry enough I'm comfortable working with and for the tree um, what I want to do is get a nice deep brown so I've got this um, dark brown. I think I might even put it next to my black here, make it just a smidge darker because this is going to be a silhouette. So um, I don't want it to be real bright because what we're seeing is the side where there's a shadow. Um, and I'm going to get a nice thin brush and we're just going to create the lines of the tree. So I might mix this around with a little bit of black just to deepen it a little. Um, thin it out so I get some nice, easy to work with lines. What I'm going to do is find where I want my tree and add in my center point. plenty of paint on there but also that it's thin enough that you can work with it. Um, so I'm just going to shape out my tree. Making sure that I include the edge. working with this nice thin liner brush I can get some really fine strokes okay um, so once this once I have a shape that I like you can come through with a thicker brush and fill it in and I work from the bottom up to thinnest, okay? So, this is part of my trunk here. You want to decide kind of where these branches bend off.
as you get closer and closer to your tips that the branches get thinner. So you might even need to change brushes. I know I'm going to change brushes here soon. brush just for and it's a little smaller so I can do the edges you can even use the same liner brush you used when you were drawing it out whereas earlier with the liner brush I was just kind of sketching with paint here I'm just gonna touch it up a little bit too much, but don't be afraid to flip this baby around if it's difficult for you to work with. Guys, what I'm not worried about is putting the part of the branches on the inside, like where the wood part of your canvas would be. Um, you can if you want to finish that line, but um, what's more important is just that you follow through onto the edge so that it all looks like it's one big piece.
add a few more little wispies here at the edges just because branches start to bud and grow. So that's my tree. Now, I'm not going to add any snow. What do you think I might be adding to this tree instead of snow? If you guessed leaf buds, you are right. So um, I'm going to use a little bit of this leftover mint and yellow green, and I'm just going to add little touches edges of my branches. Again, just dotting it in, tapping it out. Um, I'm going to do my mint first. I'm going to come back with a little bit of the um, yellow green. about where I'm putting it other than just making sure it's close to the edges of the branches. pretty subtle part of the painting uh, compared to the background. I'm just going to move it a little bit closer to the camera so you can see. Um, but I am also going to add just a little bit of maybe some grass down here. Just by streaking some of this green up and around the base of the tree. as well. If you want to add, you know, maybe a, a flower here, a few sprigs of grass, do 
that. This is your painting. I want it to reflect you, so I might just add a few little spray things. And a little bunny rabbit would be cute, so um, you can finalize your painting any way that you'd like. I'm kind of going for minimal here. Um, but that is it, guys. So uh, let this dry. Sign your name. Um, I like to varnish all my pieces. Um, if you want to varnish uh, that I recommend, it's located on the supply list. Um, otherwise, you are done, guys. So um, what you can do is up your winter solstice painting um, I have a shelf that I love to put a seasonal painting on so you can put up your winter painting and then when uh, it's time to look forward to spring you just flip it over and the cool thing about using the back of this canvas is that it already looks like it has a frame so that's kind of cool um, so this canvas is kind of two-in-one and I love that about this so um, I Again, I say this with all of my classes, I would absolutely love to see what you create. So um, definitely share your work with me. You can do that by email, Tara at PainedCicada.com, or you can tag me on Facebook at The Painted Cicada. Um, you can tag me at Instagram or Twitter at Painted Cicada. And I cannot wait to paint with you again. Thanks for joining me, guys.